Hello and welcome again to Think Red Ink. This is Don Harris and I'm the, what would you call me? I guess I'm the, the founder of Think Red Ink. Didn't found the philosophy of Think Red Ink, I want you to know, or Red Ink in general. But um, we have a wonderful uh, ministry that uh, has grown over the years uh, because we focus on what did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? We're going to be talking about some of the things that he said and some of the things he did. The doctrines that Jesus Christ believed, if you will. And we encourage people to think red ink. When you have a question or you have a, a concept that's given you trouble, a doctrine that doesn't quite make sense, you know, you'll be surprised how much the Lord actually had to say about those kind of things. And they're written right there in your Bible. Uh, let me invite you again to come by and visit our website at thinkredink.com. And um, from there, you'll be able to find the materials that you're hearing here today. And by the way, these series are available at, uh, at GLC's uh, website as well. And um, there you'll be able to find uh, materials and such as you need at thinkredink.com. Register and get the Sabbath email on a weekly basis. So... Become and be a part of that. Let's continue in our study. We've been talking about being overtaken. In these last days, as the, as the end time events start to unfold, they start, the, the, there is a pattern that is, that is emerging. And there are principal characters that will be emerging on the scene soon. And uh, we need to be able to recognize these characters. We need to be able to see the patterns. But there's a reason why... 4,000 Christian denominations all say that they're based on what they call the Word of God. Um, how did that happen? How did it turn out that uh, 4,000 people uh, or 4,000 different denominations all based on the same book? How did that happen? It, it happened because there is something called interpretation. <laughs> and uh, as they interpret what they read, now, some of them are pretty blatant about they don't really care what it says, that this is the way they do it. But some, they, say, they interpret the Bible a little differently. This is, the, this is what happens when the Word of God uh, ceases to become who the Word of God truly is, which is Yeshua, Messiah, and starts to become a book. And we start to worship the book. And we, only, we think to ourselves... If we only understood the words behind the words, if we only understood Greek and Hebrew and Latin, we would be closer to God. And the truth is, nothing could be further from the truth than that. What we need is to know the author of the book. If we knew the author, we would understand what he had to say. And this is the beauty of the red words in your scriptures. Now there's a guy who knew the author. And when he says something, he says something from a, from a place of authority. And when he says that things are going to happen in a certain order, I encourage you to believe what he says. I encourage you to think red ink. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a corrupt theology. Now, what has happened, and the reason why we will, you will, I will, any of us who have a corrupt theology, the reason we will, the first reason that we will miss the end time events is because our theology has become corrupt. How did that happen? Well, it's because, as I said at uh, Red Letter Academy, which is our, um, our online uh, uh, academy where we teach, uh, different, uh, different doctrines, different ideas. We examine different things from the scriptures. Um, in our recent uh, Red Letter Academy, where we taught on the rapture, I, I explained it this way. We just have too much babble and not enough Bible. You see, in the day we live in, the rapture is under fire. People are doubting it. People are trying to take it apart. They are they're discussing it in almost every forum and every Sunday school and <laughs> all across the country because people are, are concerned. Now, what we want to do here on, on this, uh, in this series is, is I want to settle it now and I want to settle it forever exactly what is absolutely true about the rapture and what is absolutely false. 
And we're only going to do that if we learn to think red ink. Now, remember the scripture where it says, these, these people, were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and they searched the commentaries daily whether those things were so. Did I change anything in that scripture? Yeah, I did. They didn't search commentaries, my friend. They searched the scriptures to see if the things that Paul taught were so. What we have done is we have based a lot of what we believe on what men have told us and taught us. And we should not only be ashamed, but we should make changes now. There's, there's hardly time for you to do, for you to take whatever time you're comfortable with to make these changes. It is time now to do something. Um, I don't know if you don't start today, you're going to have time. Because I think these times are coming to an end. But I think a lot of people are going to be surprised. That's the whole purpose of what we're teaching here on this Think Red Ink series. And that is to be overtaken. We don't want to be overtaken. We don't want to be surprised by the Messiah. The modern understanding of, of the common uh, teaching on end time events is based upon 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Well, I have to ask you, what is this that they're talking about? And when does this occur? Do you know when this occurs? The idea of the rapture is based pretty much solely upon 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Well, what is that? What, what is that? And, and when does that occur? Do you think you know the answers to these questions? Because actually, uh, these, these things, uh, th the idea that's prevalent today in most every church you go to came from uh, the uh, men of many, many years ago uh, that taught in this, this idea of the church being carried away. Uh, the rapture proposal in total is on a day which no man knows before the great tribulation. Jesus will appear in the sky above us, levitate the dead from their graves, and levitate the believers that are left alive and carry them all away to heaven. And then seven years later, he will return to win the final battle. Well, I've got to ask you, is this your understanding of end time events? If so, where did you get that from? Well, I became fascinated. I wondered, where did I get that from? Started looking back in history and finding out who preached this and where, does it, where did it start? And, uh, well, you know, some people who, who hold to the doctrine say, well, bless God, the Apostle Paul preached it. All right, okay, that's a, that's a matter of, of opinion uh, that uh, many people have differing opinions from. So let's see about the gap between the Apostle Paul... And you, <laughs> where did you learn it? That's the question. Um, and so I go back and I and I start finding out. You know, when when was this earliest uh, occurrence of this idea of being carried away to heaven and being levitated off of the earth? Well, um, I kept uh, finding earlier and earlier occurrences until finally the earliest occurrence I could find was a man named Increase Mather. He was a Puritan minister <clears throat> that uh, wrote about being caught up in the air. And he, he wrote about this and uh, said that uh, uh, we would be caught up in the air uh, before the world was consumed in fire and judgment. Well, there's a new idea. Well, it certainly was a new idea for the Puritans back in his day. And his, his life was between 1639 and 1723. And uh, Increase Mather was his name. And um, then, of course, the, the more famous, more prominent teacher of 
the rapture was Emmanuel Lacunza, also known as Manuel Lacunza. Um, you can find uh, information on these people on the internet. Uh, it's, it's not a secret. Uh, Emmanuel Lacunza developed a theory of being caught up about 200 years ago. Um, and he uh, published a book called uh, The Coming of Messiah and Glory and Majesty. He published that book under a pseudonym, Rabbi Juan Josephat Ben Ezra. Ooh, that sounds Jewish. Well, that was the whole idea, because he was not a Jew. He was a Catholic, and uh, he used that name, I, I can only suppose, to uh, make his uh, either uh, publish anonymously or try to lend credence to what he had to say. Now, this was the first time I heard of, or at least the first time I was able to find, of a coming that happened actually before a coming. Um, you know, that, uh, that there was going to be a, a, a rapture or there was going to be a, um, that, that, that the Lord was going to come before what the Bible taught was the second coming. So there's kind of a mid-coming. Uh, some of the people who don't believe in rapture, uh, or, or at least uh, uh, fight it, will say that uh, the, that's the second coming and the other is a third coming. But uh, I, I think we don't want to play with words. What we want to do is, is just see what history has to say about it. And um, this uh, fellow, <clears throat> Emmanuel Lacunza, he was the one that first proposed the idea to be delivered from what they call uh, Jacob's trouble. But his, his deliverance was only 45 days. Uh, he taught of a partial rapture of those who partake in the Eucharist. You see, he was Catholic, and so the Eucharist was very important to him. And uh, without the Eucharist, you would not participate in this rapture. And then a man named Edward Irving, who later became a proponent of the rapture himself, he's the one that translates the, uh, the book in, uh, for him, and he became a preacher of it. Now, what about Margaret MacDonald? You've heard of her. In 1830, a little 15-year-old girl had a vision of 144,000 first caught up to heaven. Notice the, the, the term first caught up. Well, her pastor, Robert Norton, got excited about it and published the vision that she had had. It became famous. And um, she taught of an exemption from tribulation. And she also taught a partial rapture. And she taught, uh, uh, contrary to Emmanuel Lacunza, she taught that only those who are filled with the Spirit would uh, go up. And then, of course, Edward Irving, that we mentioned before, uh, influenced by Mar uh, Mar Margaret MacDonald. Um, he was a uh, Scottish Presbyterian and believed to be the refiner of the rapture theory. Now, another principal player was John Nelson Darby. He's an Irish lawyer who felt himself uh, capable of, uh, of, of turning this, or discovering this uh, forgotten or hidden truth out of the scriptures. Now, uh, he actually left his successful law practice to become an Anglican priest. He was born in 1800. He was the famous leader of the Oxford movement in the 1830s and would later become a Catholic cardinal, <laughs> uh, which is an amazing feat. Now, at the Powers Court Conference in 1832, uh, Darby first described his discovery of the secret rapture. And, and from this, he has taken credit for the rapture teaching or the rapture theory in general. J.N. Darby and C.I. Schofield are the principal players that uh, are contemporaries of ours. They taught about a, uh, the tribulation being a duration of seven years, um, almost unheard of before that time. And also they taught that there would be a rapture of all the body of Christ, uh, which was contrary to um, Margaret MacDonald and also Emmanuel Lacunza, and I believe Increase Mather as well. But um, J.N. Darby uh, claimed that he did not receive what he uh, teaches uh, from Margaret MacDonald, and that he also introduced the idea of the imminent return. The imminent return, it could happen at any moment, uh, at, uh, that Jesus could come at any moment. Does this sound familiar to you? Because this is being preached every day. C.I. Schofield, he studied J.N. Derby, 